everyone, welcome to another rock pulling vlog. If you don't know who I am, I'm Elizabeth, I'm a marine biologist, go under the name Marine Mumbles, and I'm showing you the weirdest and most wonderful sea creatures that you can find in just a pair of wellies on the rocky shores around the UK. So come along, subscribe, and come on an adventure as we find absolutely amazing tons and tons and tons of incredible wildlife that you can see for free and I'll show you how. We're back at St Andrews and we just had to head out to this giant rock pool here which is the giant rock pool of amazement. Last time I was here I rock pulled there for about an hour. It was probably it is the best hour of rock pulling I've ever had in my life. Such awesome stuff, so many finds. So we're heading back there today because I want to see what we find again. <laughs> Let's go. Well it started off fab because I found my first albeit washed up jellyfish of the year love finding them they're just so pretty so that was a really nice colorful start and oh a little zoomy trip thing which i didn't notice at the start but just walked past can you spot that <laughs> but then the rock pools were their gorgeous wonderful cells this seaweed is called sea oak and it's one of my favorites and um there's loads of kelp which i got to rummage through elizabeth here from the future <laughs> so i'm about to describe this amazing lobster encounter i had here. <laughs> that is why in Scotland you need to be careful where you kind of put your hands in and over that rock to see a giant pair of claws coming at me. Um, and it was a decent sized lobster. I don't know what the eatable size of a lobster is, probably not that, but that was like from like where my hand is to where the camera strap is. That was a decent sized lobster with big claws. So I filmed him going past and I let him wander through. And now I'm just gonna be, you know, a tiny bit more careful about what I did over a rock because we're sharing the space with something that has the power to do a lot of damage to my fingers. Um, I've said it many a time, pick up crabs, nice and safe. Do not pick up a lobster, not safe, not fun for the lobster or for you. They've got incredibly strong claws. Oh, what a good find. I love seeing a lobster just trundle through this bright blue with red antenna thing coming through all this brown seaweed. It's always just, oh, it's just a, a wonderful sight. They don't care about their colour. They're so strong and powerful that they could be just fabulous in blue. <laughs> so cool. What I actually recorded was this. What it should have looked like is a beautiful artistic rendition there that took me all of a million minutes. <laughs> um, what I got too excited and I recorded before, during and maybe after, like the bits that were out of the water. <laughs> so I must have been recording. But anyway, I messed it up. I messed up, of course I did, but the rocky shore knew this. There was good karma floating around because with literally within like two minutes, I found another lobster and actually managed to record it. But throughout this video, there's points at which I'm like, oh, I'm really excited to look at this footage later because it's, you know, so cool with the blues and the, the browns. And um, I got a lot of footage of my leg and the surrounding sky. <laughs> Okay, back to the video. So as I said, literally two minutes later, I'm finding another lobster. I literally, it's the first rock I lifted up after, after this incident. Um, so we got to see an up close, gorgeous lobster um, again. Let me know in the comments what you want to name him. I haven't named him yet or her. Um, give me some lobster names. And uh, I think this one, this gorgeous, gorgeous creature deserves a lovely name, but they have, this bright blue shell with these gorgeous red antenna that they used to feed. I found in a couple of videos that I'll link to up here, the lobsters kind of hanging out in their burrows with their red antenna sticking out, but not wanting to come out and say hello. So it was really special to finally get some up close footage of these wonderful, wonderful predators. You can see those giant, giant claws that they have and these, um, lots of um white like spikes and everything i i don't know what the actual purpose of those are except for maybe kind of showing strength or displays as they communicate between the two of like shaping their claws but their claws are absolutely ginormous and this one must be 
pretty old because he hasn't shed his shell in a while because you can see all these barnacles living on him um, and so to grow they will shed their shell and get bigger but this one um, hasn't in a while so he might be getting to full-on adult size they molt less and less as they get older and they have these wonderful kind of tail at the end and it ends in this kind of fan which is his was nice and tucked up uh, nice and safe um, as he just sat there and chilled and let me um let me take some wonderful videos of him so thank you lobster you did um a super job a super model um in in the water thank you very very much I love setting up time lapses. Whenever I set up a time lapse to like look really cool as I'm searching around, 100% the first rock I look under, there's something I just stay near. A second lobster, or it could be the same one, but I think that's the second one. It looked actually a bit bigger, but he was super chill. So actually, finally, I've got footage of a nice lobster. Or I hope I have. It was a bit deep, like, and I didn't want to get too close. Um, but he was super chill. And so I finally got some video of like a proper lobster. I've got him um, on the rock pooling thing where the one where I find my lobster number like one of my first rock pulling vlogs but i only had a gopro and now i've got this nice camera and i haven't really seen anyone to take a proper picture with oh i'm so i'm so happy they are stunning they are absolutely gorgeous they are top quality awesomeness so that was really special and i'm glad that he was nice and chill because usually they try and pinch you and run away and he was just like oh i've heard of this girl i'm just gonna get it over with and uh i'll go about my day so thank you mr lobster I love that this shore is full of starfish. You don't find the starfish on every shore, actually. They seem to be quite fussy. Um, but you, uh, I was distracted by this itsy bitsy teeny weeny um, little brittle star. There's also these, I just, I just love the bottom of rocks. Being a biofowler, which is what I study, you can find out more here. I just love all the crusty stuff that looks weird that grows on the bottom of rocks. Looking at all the way that sponges grow, I'm gonna have to do a video on this in more detail because there's absolutely tons living just on the bottom of rocks. So I was minorly distracted by these. Um, these are beautiful, beautiful hydroids. They just form these great different shapes and each group kind of forms a different shape. And this one was, it just, just looked like a little fern, but it's actually an animal. This is not a plant, this is an animal. How epic is that? I then ran into this giant hermit crab. I wanted to hold him so that we could get some size comparisons to how big they normally are. But he brought a little friend with him. It was hermit crab inception. I was holding a hermit crab. He was holding a hermit crab. I don't know. I don't think the little one was holding a hermit crab. But I'm sure if he had the chance, he would be. Um, so I, d I don't know why this giant hermit crab was so intent on holding that little hermit crab. He would not let go. I mean, to be picked up by a human and still not drop holding on to that hermit crab. I mean, that's that's dedication. Um, and then I find found this gorgeous urchin. I'm obsessed with these. No matter how many times I find them, I will always spend ages looking at them because of their incredible color and their tube feet. And these are so cool. I mean, look at them. They use this to stick things to themselves. You could see earlier it had shells and seaweed, so it kind of sticks stuff to it to help it blend in. Um, I don't think, you know, the bright uh, green and purple does very well for camouflage, but they do have spike they have spikes to protect themselves. But they also move food particles kind of down to the stomach, which actually sits under the animal, so it can move stuff right the way around its body and feed itself that way. But I just think it's so alien looking so cool it's just really awesome it's really bizarre oh, you know you know me that is exactly what i love <laughs> the brittle stars this year have been amazing they are so colorful and this one looked like kind of like a racing car of brittle stars i think almost like racing stripes with red and white down the legs it was ready to go um i thought that was really really epic find and this is cool so this is a predator which um is a, is a dog whelk. So it will go along and use this tube at the front to kind of sniff out, maybe sniff's not the right word, but kind of use its sensory organs, you know, in a way that's almost sniffing 
to hunt down um, limpets and things to eat. Another amazing predator on the rocky shore is starfish. And when they want to move, they can move. Um, although when I set this up originally, I was like, oh, I'm gonna squat here and video this moving and realized that, okay, maybe they're not moving quite quick enough. Um, so I set up a time lapse instead. There we go. Look at that, the epic movement. But what I didn't notice is that at the top of the rock, there's also a chitin moving very, very fast. You can even see its muscular foot undulating as it moves, which I thought was a, an extra bonus, uh, bonus catch. Watching that starfish move was epic. He was already out of the water. He was like on the side of the rock anyway, when I flipped it over. And so I wanted to kind of watch him move because he seemed like he wanted, he was on the move. And then he seemed to get himself stuck. So I stopped the time lapse and put it back and made sure he got in the water. It seems that he, he kind of got his legs all too far back. <laughs> Bless him. But isn't that incredible how they move with all of those tube feet? They can move so fast compared to what you think they can move as. And like, it just seems like so much effort as well. Like so much movement of those tube feet just to keep moving. But it must work for them. It's very incredible ad adaptation. And they do that because they need to use the arms and everything and the suction to open up things like muscle shells. It's really good for their um, hunting. Go check out this video if you want to see why starfish are evil. Because that video is called Why Starfish Are Evil. And it sums up why starfish are evil. I absolutely adore sea squirts, which is what this is. And I have a whole art workshop where we go and do a dissection of sea squirts and an arty dissection. So go and check that out here. When I looked at this, I was like, what am I recording? I have absolutely no idea. So quickly, see if you can spot the animal that I'm recording. There it is. These tiny little fish that blended in with the sand. I couldn't believe I saw it, but that's the genius of juvenile species is that they are so small that their main aim is to hide long enough for them to become big enough to survive. So it's doing a good job. No matter how old I get, there is still such pure joy in picking up a crab and catching a crab and having a look at him. I just, I love everything about crabs. There's nothing bad about them. They are all awesome and they are just stunning. I love that each one has got like a little bit of personality. I love that they're just this gorgeous shape and they've got great colours on their shell and they've got these cute little eyes. Even though you'll probably want to attack me for saying that you're cute because they're small and feisty and want to rule the world. Well, crabs, if you ever want to take over the world, I'm willing to help. It's probably the only world domination I would find acceptable. Deal? I rock ball here a lot, and I'm pretty sure I keep seeing the same blue brittle star. So we're gonna name him Bluey, and uh, I'll keep recording him every time I see him. <laughs> Lots of gorgeous worms and shrimp as always. I, uh, whenever I see shrimp up close and see the bright colors, but those white dots that almost every individual has, not all of them, but this one in particular had loads of them. Um, loads of, it, they're just so, patterning and I can only think that again maybe similar to the lobster that they're used in communication or blending in or or something to do with with showing body movement something that doesn't move quite as jumpy as uh, that shrimp are barnacles but what is fabulous is when you do see them moving is you see them feeding so you can see the little particles in the water there that it's trying to catch with its tentacles, they're called Siri, and he will try and get them out of the water, just like that bit there, you can see that go in, and that's how they feed. It's absolutely fascinating and really, really clever. I do have an amazing video all on barnacles, and I'm calling it amazing because I do something in it that I just think is, well, purely amazing. I do barnacle yoga. So if you want me to, or to see me replicating this exact motion in a barnacle yoga style, when I don't do yoga, and have very little information about yoga, I mean, if that's not enticing you to watch that video after this one, then I don't know what it is. And if you don't subscribe after seeing that video, then I can do no more to make you subscribe. That is top level entertainment. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, barnacles are my absolute favorite and um, 
what was extra extra awesome i'm gonna end it um with this as well after we say hello to the silver hermit crab hello looking right down the barrel of a camera lens is this lip that was moving around which you don't see very often and i was quite intrigued with all the little um sensory feelers that are kind of coming out the bottom of the shell i imagine that helps it sense if predators are around but on top of it were so many barnacles hitching a ride and were feeding at the same time so that was just really cool to see it was like a traveling hotel for barnacles oh, there's so many stories going off in my mind right now that i can paint or draw or something that would be in a you know studio ghibli film or something how fantastic would that be um but yeah i think it's really cool so we're gonna uh, uh, end uh, with this and wrap up so that is this rock pulling vlog you wouldn't be able to tell but the reason i didn't speak for the last bit was that it was raining and now it's nice and lovely just as the tide is coming in of course um but that was really fun that was so cool i just those lobsters were fantastic i can't wait to go home and like check out the footage because i couldn't really see on my screen and ah oh, it was amazing i loved it it was a lovely calm rock pool i'll catch you next week with another video and uh bye everyone have a fantastic week